Hello and welcome to Healing from Within. I am your host, Cheryl Glick, author of The Living Spirit, which shares stories of awakening, spiritual communication, healing energies, miracles, and a guide to in- intuition for higher consciousness. I am delighted to welcome Chrissy Estelle, author of Seven Steps into Angel Light, and her and to talk about today her new Guardian Angel Oracle Cards. She is one of the most highly qualified and experienced angel teachers and writers in the UK and holds a BA in Comparative Religion and Postgraduate Certificates in Spiritual Development. And today will share with us new awareness of angels and their place in time, space, life and death, and a new perspective of their many qualities and services to humanity. Hello, Chrissy, and thank you for joining us on Healing oh, from Within. I'm so thrilled. Thank you for inviting me. And you're going to familiarize us, us with new information about angels and how your cords not only serve to share much about our celestial helpers, but offer ways to guide us in making the best choices for following our life plan and on a daily basis uh, when facing choices. And today, just before the show, I said, oh, let me pick a card for the two of us and see what comes up. And the card I picked was service. I offer Ah. the best of my talents for the greater good of all, which comes from Archangel Uriel, who exalts the divine within us as we accept our gifts of true spiritual peace so i mm. i thought that was wonderful and very yeah. appropriate and the cards we're not just selecting the card spirit is helping us get the card we need to have in the moment so let me read what the service card says we might not all be able to save lives or do other heroic deeds but everyone can play a part in society by willingly sharing their talents the angel of service encourages you to give your capabilities knowledge and time to help and inspire others and thus make a difference in the world and isn't that what we're doing today? It, it certainly is. It I, certainly is. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. But, Chrissy, let's go back to the first question I always ask my guests, which is to think back to their childhood and remember yeah. a person, a place, an event, a dream, a goal, or something that may have shown you or others around you the interest and work, the path you would take, and the life you would live as an adult. So, think back for a minute. Give us mm. an idea of something that was important to you early on in yeah. life. It's funny. I, mean, I, 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 ob- I didn't know that this was what you were going to ask me, but as I was sat waiting for the call, um, I was looking back and thinking, when was the very first time that I felt the presence of angels and for me that was when I was a little girl and I was living with my grandparents in a very small town in the north of England and I would see ribbons of light flashing around the room they didn't scare me I didn't know what they were since then I've realized they were angels but I used to ask that uh, God would make me kind and I used to go to bed at night thinking I just want to be kind. I just want to be kind to people. Mm. Um, and I think that's because I had my my uh, grandma that brought me up. She was one of those kind of ladies that if she saw somebody digging in the road outside, she'd go out with a mug of tea and she'd take them, you know, a, a homemade cake or something like that. She had a huge generosity about her. And she was a tiny, tiny little lady. So I think that had a huge influence. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she also believed, yeah, she believed in fairies and magic and angels. Um, and it really helped, you know, she read tea leaves and she she believed in past lives. So that was... Well, she, had, was a, kind she of, had a gift and you had a gift. And you were lucky she, to she, have her to to share her wisdom with you so that you could open up. And I think that's beautiful. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could all seek the kindness within us? It's there. 
it's there it, for all of us, but you exactly. asked for it to illuminate it into the world, and I think that's just beautiful. So what are some experiences you've had where angels have guided you, perhaps in a difficult situation? Hmm. Yeah, I've had a lot of difficult situations. I sometimes think that the teacher teaches what the teacher needs to learn. Yes. And so very often, you know, when I've been lost um, not just not just physically lost, sitting in my car trying to find a town where I was supposed to be giving a talk or something. I'm, I'm really lost in, in life situations. I've always been saved from a difficult situation or I've always m- met the right person at exactly the right moment to guide me in a different direction. And I'm certain that's because the angels were always around me. Um, I remember, actually, I came, I came to the USA and I was, uh, I was visiting someone in, in uh, New York. And whilst they were at work and I was hanging around waiting for them to finish their job, I walked and I just walked and walked and walked for miles. Um, and an old man came over to me and said, you shouldn't be walking around these streets. They're, they're not safe for a young lady. Um, But I knew I was safe. And then a whole gang of youngsters walked towards me, young men with with hoodies on. And um, I've never felt fearful. But I just said, angels, protect me, please. Mm -hmm. And they all crossed the street and walked along the other side. And I just carried on merrily walking along on my side of of the road. And I always say, you know, that was one of the angels protecting me because I didn't know that there was someone walking next to me. But clearly they felt they should cross over. You know, little things like that. well, that, that's life. not so little. It's actually <laughs> no, it's a big so miracle. Little. It's actually a wonderful <laughs> miracle. Uh, I had a similar situation like that in New York City when my daughter was doing commercials, and I was young and she was young, and we were in the city, and I started to look in the window. It was the window of a jewelry shop, and all of a sudden I turned, and there were three men, very rough-looking men, surrounding us and I tightened my hold on my daughter's hand and I looked in their eyes and they said let her go so perhaps the light in my eye or or lack of fear or the angels shining through yeah whatever the angels shining through whatever yeah. happened uh, uh, yeah. uh, it was a, 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 a very special moment like yours but I want to tell you a little story so the angels are guiding us all, and they are around all of us. Now, in the last 20 years, after awakening to this new reality about life, death, and the nature of universal energy, which supports this physical world, I changed my belief systems and my earlier training, uh, which believed that life ends with our physical death, and that angels are only mythical representations of ways to deal with death and nature and man and spirit. You know, I thought Mm. it was a beautiful concept, but I didn't really think it was real. In other words, I really didn't believe in angels. Now I know, I don't believe, I know beyond the shadow of doubt that angels and souls and guides and spirit are always around us while we're in this physical realm. And the reason I know it, and I'm going to tell you this story of an angel that I met, Uh, One of the very first angels I met, this was uh, 20 years ago when I was becoming very involved in this work. My mom had a major heart attack during a car accident, and she was taken to a hospital in Brooklyn, New York. And it was actually the same hospital I was born in. And in intensive care, this young male nurse came into the room, and she told me he was going to take care of her. And I asked his Mm -hmm. name, and he said, Timothy. And Mm -hmm. days later, when she was taken to another section of the hospital, she now had a feeding tube inserted in her nose, and Timothy walked in, and I said to him, she's not doing well. And Timothy walked over to the bed and said to her, you don't need that feeding tube. You can eat on your own. And the next morning when I visited, the feeding tube was out, and she was with help eating a little jello. 
So I ran through the halls of the hospital, asking everybody where Timothy was, because I wanted to thank him. <clears throat> but nobody knew Timothy. <clears throat> so although my after my mother passed, and since that time I have met other Timothys, at times when I needed to hear something and to be inspired, and they <clears throat> have always renewed my spirit, uh, and I then develop my healing gift and my ability to receive messages from spiritual energies. And I have met other guides in human form who have assisted and led me forward. So, yes. well, well, I believe angels are a special life force and God's messengers and yep. do not have a physical life. There seem also to be humans who embody or reflect this angelic en energy and, yes. they, and yes. they help us also. Yeah. So, yeah. so when I wrote I had a I wrote a book a few years ago called Gifts from the Angels and that was all about people who had had experiences like yours with Timothy um people who had seen a, a presence of a person a human person who just given them the right information or helped them um and and, and that's the the book is just stories from real stories like your own of people's experiences where they've been their, their life has changed because of a renewed faith in the presence of the angelics and and it's just wonderful your story reminds me of one my mother told me when she was little when 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 her uh, she, my grandmother had an accident and she fell downstairs and she lost a baby and my mother was about eight years old and she was not allowed to go and visit uh, my mother, her mother. And so she was sitting on, the, on one of the corridors outside in the old-fashioned hospital. And her father went in and said, Shh, be, be a good girl and just stay there. And a lady walked towards her, dressed in blue. She thought it was a sister's uniform. And the lady said, come with me, I'll show you your mum. Your mummy's going to be fine. And opened a door and ushered my, my mum, little girl mum, in through the door, showed her her mummy lying there, okay, she was going to be fine. She looked very white and pale, but she was going to be fine. Then the lady took her hand and brought her back out and sat her on the chair and just whispered, shh, with her finger on her lips and walked off. And then when her father came out and said, I'm sorry you couldn't go in and see you know, your mummy, and she said, oh, I did see, I did see her, I did see her, no, no, you didn't, no, no, the door didn't, you know, <laughs> nobody came in, the door didn't open, she said, I did see her, the lady, the sister brought me in, and then when the nursing sister came along, she wasn't wearing blue at all, she was wearing white, Right. and so my mum then, she knew, she knew that something special had happened, and she says that's her first experience of uh, an angel in physical form but she moved to america and she she had a very wonderful life communing with angels and writing books and teaching people about angels but she didn't bring me up um so it's interesting that even though my father was a mystic and my mother was a healer and communed with angels they got divorced when i was a baby and and neither of them brought me up your and yet here your grandmother, i am doing the same thing your grandmother yes. brought you up but she had she, the, she had the gift also, yes, so you were lucky had. to be surrounded by so many people yes, aware of the yes. nature of energy and yes. the true what we truly are as spiritual beings yes. having a physical life. Yes. That's a wonderful story. I thank you very yes. much for that. Uh, yes. What do angels? What would you think angels have to do with intuition? I, I, I believe they prompt us. I think we have to be open to it. We have to have an experience in life that informs us in some way. Very often people have had a, either a near-death experience or, or, or a traumatic, almost devastating life experience where they've lost somebody or they've had a divorce or there's something, something that's taken them down to a deep pit of, of despair I think sometimes and then they open to something because a beautiful experience lifts them out of out of their doom and I think this is when the third eye 
switches. Or well, either that or, or opens, <clears throat> yeah. A lot of the millennials now, they're just born with it. You know, they're fantastic young people who are so sensitive and they just have this sense of knowing they're all doing yoga or, you know, something similar that's awakening their chakra system, their their inner, uh, if you like, their inner knowing. And I, I think once we've developed that, this is when we start to see angels. This is when we start to commune with the other worlds. And I, I think we are in the middle of a, a huge spiritual yeah. transformation and, and the millennials and the young children being born are yeah. bringing in a sense of uh, many spiritual gifts and awareness at a young age to help make this transition. And some of us, you and I, are here maybe ahead of time uh, to be able to help and assist those. Yep, uh, yep. I and, agree. And, uh, and uh, you know, just talking about intuition – Really, intuition is a sense of knowing with really out have, without having to think about things in a mind-based way. It comes yeah. from the heart, and it is yeah. about the ability to trust and to love life and the universe and angels and spirit uh, with all our heart and with all our yeah. soul. I guess that was written in the Bible, to love God with all our heart and all our soul. Uh, and yeah. God is a universal force. No matter what religion, no matter what discipline you practice or, or modality, it is all about energy and the creative mm -hmm. force of change. So yeah. angels help us in many ways, in dreams, in visions, through intuition, uh, through uh, a sense of signs. feeling pre signs, right, yeah. through our senses, yeah. and they're working with us in in so many, so many ways. And, you know, in my case, I was awakened to this through a dream, through the f fact that perhaps there was another reality that I hadn't been paying attention to. And once mm -hmm. I started to think that way, people and events started to shift and change in my life synchronicity coincidences and yeah. i was led and guided very rapidly uh to the people who helped me to remember my gift from childhood that i had yeah. shut down because i was living with expectations from the outside world and people around me and i was giving up a part of my inner soul being yeah. in just yeah. in order to be accepted and to fit in and, mm -hmm. and that changed uh, very much. But let's go on to your very beautiful deck of cards. How, sure. how might you suggest people begin to use your deck of informative and beautiful angel cards when they get them? Tell us a little bit about the cards themselves. Well, the cards, each of them are 52 in the pack, and they're divided into four different suits. So each of the, each of the suits are one of the main four archangels. So we have Michael cards with messages from Michael, which are all about self-empowerment and protection and how to, how to be in your power and it, with different ways of how to do that. So there are 12 cards with Michael. Then there are cards with 12 cards from Archangel Uriel, which is all about uh, teaching and it's about service administering to the world, being part of the great movement towards raising the, the consciousness of humanity. And it's, those 12 messages are all about how may I have inner peace and at the same time, how best may I serve. And then we have 12 cards from Archangel Raphael, and these are all about how, will, how best may I heal so it's about myself but it's also about healing other people that I come into touch with as well and then the uh, 12 cards from Gabriel are all about direction and movement so we have cards that give us our purpose cards that empower us cards that enable us to serve the rest and cards that help us to heal and they've got different colors around them depending on which archangel is giving the message but the reason why there are 52 is because i felt that it would be really good to use these cards not just for divining but also to work on our own personal spiritual growth yeah. 
So you can take one card randomly if you like, or you can ask the archangel to show you which message you need to learn. And you can take one card and you can use the affirmation, that lovely affirmation that you read out for the angel of service, and you can work with that for a week at a time. That's just so what I did. That's just yeah. what I did today. I asked to show a card uh, that would uh, show uh, our purpose, yours and mine, in doing yeah. this show today and yeah. what we hope to achieve. And I picked, of course, I didn't pick it. They gave the it universe. to me. The universe. Yeah, they, gave, they, they do. Gave they do. it I always, to us. Yeah, I always say to people um, when, they, when I'm teaching them how to use the cards, I always say go through the whole uh, pack of cards first and connect with each of the pictures, each of each angel, each uh, symbolic angel on the card and the colors and see what the angel is doing and see what it says to you first. And just go through the whole pack and see how your energy blends with each of those cards and then shuffle them and then ask what do I need to know today or ask, you can ask reading, you can say, how have I got to this point? What's happening now? What do I need to move on from this? So you can take three cards and use them. There are lots of readings in the, in the book that comes with it. And it's, there's a very nice guide with all the different colored cards inside the book. But the thing that I really loved when I was doing these cards, I was, I was, given, I was given the words, we agreed... We agreed 48 cards and then one for each of those archangels. And then Watkins gave me a list of words. And they said, can you give us a card for each of these words? And so I lit a candle in my office and I sat and meditated with each word until a vision came into my head, into my third eye, into my intuition. And then I very quickly asked, what is it you want people to understand from this image? And it was very generic. It was for everybody. It, was, it needed to be a message for each of these words and each of these pictures that would speak to everyone at whatever level of development or understanding they are at. So people who've been doing this work like we have for 20 years, we get a highly intuitive image and, and a sense of knowing what we're being told. And for those people who are just starting out and they've never worked with this kind of card, they can use the book and they can read and they can interpret how that means for them. And then they can use the affirmation to make that real. But, of course, you and I both know that this is not what angels look like. This is just no, yes. so that people can get the image because we all love <laughs> the human. Well, you know, actually, everything. the angels will show us what we need at whatever level of development we're yes. at in order yes. to capture our attention and interest yes. and to work yes. with us. And, you know, I, I think we're moving towards a sense with the millennials of trying to achieve heaven on earth or to yeah. improve living and cooperating according to the law of attraction and to bring more light into the world. And more and more people are turning to spirit and the angels. And life, yeah. life is going to improve, even in it the will. middle of all, all, all. Maybe we're having all these challenges at this time in history. And so we can move towards the truth of knowing ourselves as spiritual beings, having this yeah. physical life, and eventually yep. uh, creating more harmony and balance and love pl on this yep. planet and in yep. the universe, because everything's interconnected and important, and we can't neglect anything. Now, you also have a, a new book, Seven Steps into Angel Life. What was your hope that readers would take away with them from reading this book? I, my intention and my hope is that people will begin to understand exactly what you've said, that we are light beings having a human experience. But what I found when I was doing the research for this book, um, it's seven chapters, 
seven archangels, the benefits of working with each of those angels on a very personal and practical down-to-earth level. I, because I, I now know from researching for this that we have light in every cell. Every cell of mm. our body has a yes. photon. We've got light in us, and we can reflect that light, the higher the vibration of our own energy. And so I try and encourage people to work with each of these power powerhouses, these angelic beings um, that are not people, they're not, they're not actual people, they're, they're, they're huge, fast energy uh, lights out there, and we can connect with them and draw them close to us, and we can reflect the, if you like, the virtues of those high energy beings in our own lives, but for me, it's all about being practical we're human beings we're having a, a human experience we have mm -hmm. two feet on the ground and i believe that our role or I, I i feel that our role as human beings is to anchor that light because the angels are not walking the earth with us they they can and they may but in principle the human beings are the ones with the heavy body and we need to anchor that light and understand that it's flowing through us and then as we walk the earth we are creating footsteps of light everywhere we go so our role is to be the best me that i can be and you be the best you that you can be and i i do believe that the angels these seven archangels that i'm working with and i've been working with for 20 years are with us all the time and we can we can we can connect into that powerhouse that energy source of course, and because so the book takes you through a, a whole process of a journey and seven easy steps in order to be able to go higher and higher and raise your vibration until we get to the last one, which is how may I serve? Which is the card you brought up? I was so thrilled when you said <laughs> it's the card of service because for me, Uriel is the one who says, "Okay, you're ready." Come out and do your bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But we know that angels are God's messengers or spirits' Absolutely. messengers as we're directed as human yeah. beings to know the beauty and goodness of the spiritual yeah. kingdom. And angels yeah. help all human beings to appreciate the intentions of those in spirit because they yeah. wish us to act honorably. That's a very important word, truthfully, and to avoid contamination by loving yeah. unjust and negative actions. So they're yeah. the guide, and they're the protectors, and they love us. They simply love us, and they know we're not perfect, and we're going to have mm, situations that are challenging, and we are being helped as much as possible but we do have to experience what we were born as souls to experience and work through it to the best of our ability. So I want to thank you, Chrissy Estelle, author of Seven Steps into Angel Light, and also uh, for producing the Guardian Angel Oracle Cards and for sharing the magical world of angels and spirit who guide us and inform us to the magnificence of our own soul potential often even when we are not fully aware of it. In order to purchase this beautiful set or the book of artistically superb angel cards with much information about the gifts of each angel shares with us, go to Chrissy, C-H-R-I-S-S-I-E, Astell, A-S-T-E-L-L dot com. In summarizing today's episode of Healing from Within, I hope our talk on the beauty and grace of the angels who have always and now are there to support and guide us to our higher sense of being as we remember our soul essence and expand and refine our energy through our human journey of life. We gather through all challenges and experiences greater compassion and love for ourselves and others surrounded always and enhanced by universal source and energy. Chrissy and her guide to the use of the angel cards gives us beautiful descriptions of the purpose and help that the angels are guided by the divine to share with us. She writes, In today's busy and often stressful world, 
Many of us feel the need for some kind of spiritual light, love, and guidance. Luckily, no matter what our belief system, angels and their energy are a presence that any of us can call upon to act as channels between ourselves and God, the divine or spirit, whatever we understand this universal power to be. It is, of course, possible to connect with angels simply through prayer or meditation. However, using the angel cards in this kit can help you to tap into their energy in a more focused way, especially if you need insight into a particular issue. Chrissy and I hope our listeners look beyond the thoughts of their mind and the experiences of our physical world uh, that offer, often uh, cause us to shut down our inner sense of wisdom and intuition and to forget who we are. And we simply must feel with the heart, ask for help from above, and be grateful to the beings of light who surround and support us always with love and guidance if we simply ask. I am Cheryl Glick, host of Healing From Within, and I invite you to visit my website, CherylGlick.com, to listen to and read about visionaries, spiritualists, scientists, metaphysicians, psychologists, and all who hope for understanding and for enhancing human and spiritual progress and our evolution for an improved quality of life for all. Shows may also be heard on DreamVision7Radio.com and WebTalkRadio.net. Thank you.